This is exciting. It's like we're voting together. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is a bit of a new angle. Apologies, but um, it is really late here. It is midnight on October 22nd and and my apartment is probably a mess. I don't know what exactly you can see behind me. So again, I'm gonna need you to extend some grace to me right now. <laughs> Today, we are going to fill out my ballot together. I'm bringing you guys along on the ride to filling out my ballot for the election on November 3rd. Or if you're in a state like me, Florida, early voting started for us on Monday. Uh, today is Wednesday. I plan on going next Monday be because that is a time that works within my schedule. Uh, there's one really important point that I do want to make about this election on November 3rd. Obviously, yes, here in the US, we are going to be voting in president. And I don't think there's any secret about uh, the person that I want to replace in the White House. However, one thing that I do, do think is really, really important to remember um, about this election on November 3rd is that you're more than likely voting in your community, in your neighborhood, in your state, and in your city for more than just the president. I printed this off from Ballotpedia.org. This is my ballot. As you can see, it is six pages long, right? There's a hell of a lot more than just who's going to be the president on here. And um, we're going to go through today and check out what else is on here, what I'm going to be voting for, and how you can do it too. This is a little sidebar, but I'm just a regular person just like you. Um, I don't do any of this in any professional capacity. We are all a part of this system and we do all get a say in our democracy. And the reason why I'm talking about this now is because I think that there is not a whole hell of a lot that's more important to me right now than um, exercising my right to vote. We all get a say in what our futures and what our communities are going to look like. And uh, this is our opportunity to make our voices heard. First and foremost, you're gonna assume that you're watching this video, you're registered to vote. Uh, this is the, the back of my voter registration card here. Um, what you're gonna wanna look for, first of all, uh, on the bottom, well, this is gonna vary by state, but your, if you have a voter registration card, more than likely all of your um, like congressional district numbers will be printed on, on here somewhere. I keep this card inside of my Louis Vuitton jean wallet. Is, we're gonna shoehorn some luxury into this. Fits in here perfectly, just like this. Another reason, this is just the best wallet of all time. I had to, sorry. But I'm telling you, like a couple of months ago, we had a, we had like a like a local primary here in August, and I spent many hours looking at like maps and stuff to try and find out what all my congressional districts and things are. And as it happens, you can save yourself many many hours in front of a really bright screen at night by just looking on your registration card. Pro tip. With me, I will be taking my photo ID, my driver's license, as well as my voter registration card. Laws are different in every state, which is why we're going to be using the Vote Save America tool, because you're gonna put in some of your information and it's going to populate you with all of the rules you need to know, all the things that will be on your ballot, as well as ways that you can volunteer, donate, and um, help out in the upcoming election. So, as I said, um, early voting for me started on Monday the 19th, and I am going to go at a time that works for me within my schedule. Remember, we're gonna go to votesaveamerica.com. You can also check out ballotpedia.org. I have, I used Vote Save America in the previous two elections, and um, it was just really helpful in explaining to me, a lay, a lay person, uh, a lot about the um, a lot about the candidates, a lot about ballot proposals, constitutional amendments. I made my plan to vote. I, I will be voting early in person. Um, I decided to do that because um, this is going to be a very different and potentially difficult election, and I want to make I want to ease the burden. So I'm going to go in an off-peak time, probably on a Monday. I do expect that there, wherever you live, there may be lines, USPS difficulties. So I decided to do that one for myself, and you guys should make the decision that works best for you and your lives and your schedules. Now we are going to get started on my ballot. Uh, so we are on our, we are on votesaveamerica.com. Um, we're gonna go to the top menu that says know your state. So we're gonna find my state. 
I live in Florida. If you live in a, in a state that's not a swing state, you can also um, uh, volunteer and register to call voters, donate, do all kinds of different things. Now we can go here to make a plan and make a plan is going to show you what your rules are like, tell you where your poll polling places are, as well as uh, what the dates are for early voting in your state. But we are going to go all the way down to the bottom to what's on my ballot. And that is where we are going to input our address. So this is my voter guide. Not sure what's on your ballot this year? Find out. Explore your ballot, save as you go, and vote. So this tool goes through and shows you everything that is going to be on your ballot. It gives you a little bit of an explainer. It gives you like a side-by-side -side comparison of the different candidates. Select an office to get started. So federal candidates. As we know, the president this is a part of this election this year. And um, given our two options, I'm voting with my values front of mind. And I invite everyone to do the same. Moving on, I've chosen Joe Biden as my candidate for president. Running mate is Kamala Harris, who's awesome. We're gonna add this to my ballot. Joe Biden is added, right. I'm telling you, like a couple of months ago, we had, an, we had like, a, like a local primary here in August and I spent many hours looking at like maps and stuff to try and find out what all my congressional districts and things are and as it happens, you can save yourself many, many hours in front of a really bright screen at night by just looking on your registration card. Pro tip, U.S. House of Representatives, Florida 27th Congressional District for South Florida. Um, we have two candidates and I personally, I'm going Democratic down the whole ticket because that party aligns with my values once again. Um, more so than the other in a very, very big way. And this is not about me telling you who to vote for, what to vote for, why to vote for any of these people. This is just showing you how to do it. Now here's, here's what's, what's really interesting and useful about this tool. So there's an about section. We have her education. We have how she feels on the issues like the economy. We are going to add Donna Shalala to our ballot. Added to my ballot. Okay, so now we're going to local candidates, and that's where this stuff isn't as um, isn't as easy and straightforward. I would say um, here in Florida, a lot of uh, the offices um, a lot of the offices are not partisan. So if you do intend to vote a, along a party line, it's not as easy. So you kind of have to go in and sort of get a feel for these people. So what I did is kind of just do a little bit of a Google search on some of these candidates. We're not gonna be doing that right now, but. We're gonna see what this tool says. Uh, Daniela Levine Cava, nonpartisan. I remember that I voted for her in the primary in August. So let's see, let's get her about. Uh, one thing we do wanna pay attention to as well is who endorses these people. She is endorsed by Planned Parenthood. That's important to me. Uh, and by the way, these are active links. You can click on these things. Like for example, Civil Rights Equality Florida. This is gonna bring us to a page of who we are, what are we about? Issues overview, let's see. What do they have to say about adoption? They are against banning same-sex couples from being able to adopt. Against banning it, meaning they are in support of people who are, you know, kind, loving, stable, to have children, regardless of their sexual identity. I think that's cool. Okay, so this judge is supported by a lot of organizations that seem to be in favor of a lot of the things that I personally am in favor of. But let's look at her opponent. Her opponent is Esteban Bovo. Again, it says nonpartisan. This person wants to research, assess, and implement new crime fighting technologies to assist law enforcement. Um, I don't like that that's the first thing on the list here, to be very honest. Um, expanding police body camera practices. Mm. Uh, and again, this isn't about speaking specifically about the issues or me telling you who to vote for and why but just sort of a grasp on how how to use this because I found it very, very helpful. I think Daniela Levine Cava is the one I like. Okay, this is the county commission. I have been looking at a lot of the mailers and I have seen that um, Eileen Higgins is the one that is endorsed by a lot of the people that I already 
know or have heard of. I have done research on this in the past and I have been getting a ton of like text messages from people in support. She's endorsed by a political party. That helps. And let's see with this other guy. Who is he endorsed by? Eh. I'm sorry, but police union endorsements are not really doing it for me at the moment. I'm being very honest with you. I said it. Eileen Higgins is added to my ballot. Oh, it seems that this tool is not foolproof. Just remember that if we look at an entire map of the United States, there are literally thousands of little mini elections happening in every single community and neighborhood. Unfortunately, this system is broken up in a way that doesn't make it particularly easy for regular people like you and I to participate in it. If you do have like difficulties finding um, information about the information about candidates that are on your ballot, um, what I recommend doing, what I've, what I've done before, is check out your local newspapers. It's really easy to get sort of like lost in the sauce on like national politics, but the local stuff is actually what really matters to you and your community. And there are actually people who are actually paid to do the work of informing us, and those people are your local journalists. So you wanna check out your local news, local news, outlets and resources. Um, I have the Miami Herald. I have my, uh, the, the TV news. It's, uh, I have lo local 10 for Miami. Since it is someone's job to keep us all informed as to what goes on in our local communities, it's really important to support these news outlets. Either subscribe or send a donation to your local newspaper. They are really, really struggling in these times and they have been for a very, for, for a very long while. Um, the best way for us to be able to be informed is by having good journalism and the way to have good journalism is to have good journalists and we all need to put food on the table so if someone can put food on the table by figuring out who all of these people are and what they do you know when all of us stop paying attention after the election is over then i think that that's valuable so donate to your local newspaper Another PSA. Most um, news outlets are going to have a search feature somewhere on their website. They're usually not so hard to find. Type in the person's name, uh, what has been said about them in the news since the beginning of time. This is a lot to do. We're grown ups, we have to do things that are sometimes unpleasant but very, very important. That said, do we all have time to necessarily read every single article? from 2006? Probably not. Uh, pro tip, control F. Control F is your friend. Control F, type in the person's name once you get to the article and see kind of, you know, the relevant, inf relevant information about them. You're welcome. We're all grown-ups here, right? And it's important to keep yourself informed. It is so incredibly important. Um, I know that everyone's super busy. You guys know I say this all, all the time. I have three jobs. I work full-time at one job, part-time at two jobs. I, I try to keep this place looking semi-decent. That takes time. Um, I found that um, the best way for me to keep informed as best as possible is to listen to podcasts. I find that it's, it's a great way for me to um, take in information while I'm doing something else because guess what? I spend literally every waking moment of my life doing something else. I can leave a list below of a lot of ones that I've really enjoyed and gotten a lot of useful information out of. I'm a great proponent of podcasts. Yeah, it's a great way to, to do like a deep dive into a subject. Like I wish I had more time honestly to like read journalism, but the fact is I don't. So when I'm washing my dishes, when I'm commuting home, I try to keep myself informed that way. Here, in my election, um, we are deciding whether or not to retain certain judges and I want to see a little bit about them. Uh, you're going to want to check out their their own campaign websites. I am interested in what people have to say about themselves, like what do they feel like their platform is and what are the words that uh, they you know, think are important to put out there. That's of interest to me because certain things are priorities to people that go against my interests and my values. Check out their websites, check out their social media. If you see any of their ads or their commercials or anything like that, you know, take notice, um, but also check out their, so their social media. Um, are they on Twitter? If they are on Twitter, what are they talking about on Twitter? <laughs> Were they uh, standing in solidarity with anyone over the summer? 
do like a YouTube search, do a Google search. Um, one thing that worked for me in the last election was that I found that if I type into YouTube the person's name, um, I got a whole bunch of like TV and news appearances on behalf of, behalf of clients that they were representing. Who are the people that they are representing? What work have they been doing for the last 20 years? I think that can be very much indicative and enlightening to how they feel about certain things and what they intend on doing when they're in office. So what have they been using the past decades uh, to further? Everyone likes to run on experience and how they're qualified for the job. Well, what have you been doing for the last 10, 10 years? Is it different than what you're saying on your ad website? Okay, so now we're getting into the ballot measures. I can read this because I speak English, but this is not the English that regular people like you and I, like I'm speaking now, it's not the way we speak. Um, Vote Save America breaks down sort of what the ballot measures mean um, in a way that a uh, normal, normal non-lawyer could can, can uh, digest relatively easily. Um, it explains what a yes vote means, what a no vote means. A lot of the time, these measures can be written in a very confusing way, so you don't, so, so it's a little bit hard to see like what does yes mean and what does no mean and this actually explained it explains it out for example um we have a constitutional amendment citizenship requirement to vote in florida this amendment provides that only united states citizens who are at least 18 years of age a permanent resident of florida um and registered to vote as provided by law should be qualified to vote and that sounds pretty straightforward, but this breaks it down really well. So for example, this measure would change the language in the, states, in the, the state constitution from every citizen of the United States having the right to vote to only a citizen of the United States having the right to vote. The state constitution already restricts voting to U.S. citizens only, but the bill, ad, bill advocates argue that the bill is needed because some cities like New York, San Francisco, Chicago, and Miami um, have interpreted their state's language to allow non-citizens to vote in local in certain local elections. Personally, I'm in support of everyone voting. That's part of the reason I'm doing this video right now. So I want to expand people who live in a community to have a voice in that community. I'm going to use that frame of mind to determine which one to go for. A yes vote in this case means you should support amending the Florida Constitution to state that only a citizen of the U.S. can vote in Florida. A no vote here means you support the Florida Constitution keeping its current language which states that every citizen of the U.S. can vote. I like every over only in this case, so every for me. Raising Florida's minimum wage. Um, so this, once again, we're going to do the ballot breakdown. It shows you what a yes vote means. A yes vote means that Florida's minimum wage will increase over the next six years to $15 an hour in 2026. That's six years from now. The last time Florida voted to increase the state minimum wage was in 2004. I didn't know that. It's time. A no vote means it will remain at 846. I don't know about where you live, but South Florida is not particularly cheap to live in, and I don't know how any person could afford their life at $8.46 an hour, especially in six years, are you, no, no. We're voting yes, we're voting yes. This is what I found really interesting. Basically, again, we have our ballot breakdown. This explains it really, really well. I read it from here and understood it to mean that we have to vote for everything twice, and that's basically the gist of it. And I'm like, wait a minute, no. A no vote means you support keeping the current system in place, only requiring one general election to vote to approve amendments. Like, I'm doing this video, I'm going through this whole process, like, the likelihood that people, I mean, and this is something that we want to change, but the likelihood that people are going to show up to do it again, um, that's not how we get progress. That's how we get more of the status quo. You asked me, I told you once, I don't need to tell you again. I'm voting, I'm voting no. Uh, next we have a constitutional amendment. Um, ad valorem tax discount for spouses of certain deceased veterans who had permanent combat related disabilities. So once again, we're gonna ask ourselves, what are my values? 
personally, I think that veterans should get as much as we can possibly give them. So if it means giving veterans more things, I'm probably okay with it, probably. But let's read. Um, under current law, the Homestead Property Tax Discount for Veterans expires when they die. I am the child of a veteran. I, I have a, you know, an understanding of how um, VA benefits can really go to help a, uh, help a family of a veteran that is no longer with us. So again, because of that lived experience, because of my general values, I'm in favor of giving veterans and the families of veterans as much as possible due to the sacrifices they have given for this country. This amendment would let Florida veterans who qualify for a homestead property tax discount transfer that benefit to a spouse upon their death until the spouse remarry, remarries or sells or otherwise disposes of the property. Uh, that's kind of a no-brainer to me. Let's see what the yes and no vote mean in practical terms. A yes vote would mean you support allowing a homestead property tax tax discount to be transferred to the surviving spouse. Think about the implications of this. You've lost a partner, potentially, uh, that has a lot of financial uh, ramifications, as well as, you know, emotional and just stability. Yeah, it's really, really stressful, really um, a terrible thing to happen. And then for your, you know, budget to now be impacted as well when you may already be losing out on an income. This one's kind of a no-brainer to me. We are voting yes on this because I support giving veterans more things and their families, obviously. And this is my last one. So this is a county referendum here in Miami-Dade for the nonpartisan election of county sheriff, property appraiser, tax collector, and supervisor of elections. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole like big explainer on, big explainer on these because it is so singular and niche. These are, these are county by county and there are literally thousands of counties all over the country. This one has me thinking, so I'm going to read it to you and it's a little bit like jargony, so pardon me, but let's let's try this out. Shall the charter be amended to require commencing with the qualifying for and holding of the general election in 2024? That sounded like, you know, garbled. Um, that contingent on a change to state law, the election of the sheriff, property appraiser, tax collector, and supervisor of elections be conducted on a nonpartisan basis and that no ballot shall show the party designation of any candidate for those offices. Okay, that was really hard to read but basically what this means is um are we should we amend the county referendum or whatever this is um to require that the offices of sheriff property appraiser tax collector and supervisor of elections not have a party affiliation on the ballot itself this one for me is hard because on the one hand I do see that like it probably isn't appropriate for supervisor of elections to have like an R or a D next to their name. Um, ditto for the sheriff and the tax collector, all of these, all of these positions. But on the other hand, for me as a voter, like it kind of is useful for me to like as a quick point of reference to see like, hey, where does this person's political leanings lie? How are those things going to um, impact what they do in the capacity of the job? But on the other hand, like, do I want to have a Republican sheriff? Like, no, you're supposed to just be a sheriff. The fact is that some of these are going to be really difficult. Like, there's a couple that I'm just flat out skipping in this video because it's about like a specific condo tower and I, I don't have all the answers to this, and I'm being completely real and com completely honest with you. I'm trying to give you as much information as I can, but some of it really is about like how you feel. Like, what is your what is my opinion on whether or not the ballot for when we're voting in supervisor of elections should it have party designation on it? And I don't know. Like, I'm thinking maybe it should because I know that would be something useful for me as a voter. Who they have backing them and who and the people that they endorse. This is not like a true or false type of thing. This is really like 
this one really feels like an opinion of mine and there's gonna be some of these that are really hard and you have to like sit and really think about this. Um, it's time for us all to do our homework. Um, this is really important and um, unfortunately it's not as easy as we would like. Like I wish personally that they would start writing this stuff in language that a regular person can understand. Where is that on the ballot? I digress. This is part of being a citizen in this country and this is part of participating in our democracy. And maybe the answers aren't just gonna be handed to you. It truly really has to be based on what you think, how you feel, what are your values, and what, what's important to you. I hope that this helped someone. I hope that you're registered to vote. If you can, if you are able, um, there may still be time to register as a poll worker on election day in your community, which that's something that I've done as well as doing this. Um, you can phone bank, you can donate. Um, there are state, there are Senate seats and state Senate seats and just all kinds of other things on the ballot outside of just the president that also need your opinion. They need your opinion. This is the time when they ask us what we want and we get to decide. So um, with that, I hope this was helpful. I'll have a list of resources. And like I said, I love my podcasts. That's how I take in a lot of complex information and in like an hour at a time. Sometimes a lot of them are less than that, P.S. <laughs> but I'll have uh, more resources linked down below in the description box of this video. If you need help with your ballot, if you really like this explainer, you're gonna go to votesaveamerica.com, which once again will be linked down below in the description box and partnered up with Ballot Ready to explain all of these things to regular people like you, like me, so that we can participate in our democracy. With that, hope you're voting. Biden 2020 and um, love you guys. Hope this was useful and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.